Scientists may have found a natural cure for malaria, but it works on mosquitoes. You heard that right. Researchers in Kenya discovered a microbe that can completely prevent mosquitoes from carrying malaria. According to the study published in Nature Communications, the microbe could be used to check the spread of malaria around the world. BBC reports that malaria kills 400,000 people every year, and most of the victims are children. The research teams from the UK and Kenya found that the malaria-stopping fungal microbe called Microsporidia MB was present in 5% of the mosquitoes they sampled. The fungus grows in the genitalia and digestive system of mosquitoes, and the data suggests it is 100% effective in stopping malaria from infecting mosquitoes. Speaking to the BBC, the authors say they do not as yet know how the fungus stops malaria. The paper's lead author, Jeremy Heron, says at least 40% of mosquitoes in a region need to be infected with the fungus to curb malaria transmission. While other strategies to defeat malaria have been proposed, such as using genetically engineered fungi to exterminate mosquitoes, the researchers say utilizing microsporidia would not endanger species that eat mosquitoes. While we at Tomo News wish all the best for Kenya's effort to stamp out malaria, we certainly hope they're not putting a certain official in charge of that. Who, you ask? This guy. Why? Well, you'll see. The WHO, trustworthy or not, has explicitly stated that alcohol does not protect against coronavirus. In fact, stating that it could make a person more vulnerable to the pandemic. But it's safe to say the governor of Nairobi didn't get that message. Nairobi politician Mike Sonko has come under fire for his so-called COVID-19 care package, which, yes, includes the typical food staples one would expect, but also alcohol. Sonko confirmed in a media briefing last Tuesday that his care packages include a few small bottles of the cognac Hennessy. Though it was his justification for its inclusion that has left people mocking as he explained to the crowd, it's throat sanitizer. I think from the research conducted by the World Health Organization and various organizations, it has been believed that alcohol plays a major role in killing the coronavirus giving some small bottles of Hennessy in the, the food pack, uh, the package which we give to, to, to our people. Uh, I think from the research uh, which has been conducted by the World Health Organization and various health organizations, it has been revealed that uh, uh, alcohol uh, plays a, ve a very major role in killing uh, the coronavirus or any sort of uh, virus. Uh, no. As I mentioned, the WHO has actually repeatedly stated that alcohol can weaken the health of an individual and make them more vulnerable to viruses, including coronavirus. So I don't know what videos he's been watching. The global CEO of Amref Health Africa shared a video of his misinformed nonsense and urged people to dump this the way you would dump your used COVID-19 mask. Meanwhile, Hennessy has refuted through local media the claims by the Nairobi governor that his drink in particular or alcohol in general can ward off coronavirus contagion. In a statement to Nairobi News, the company said, Hennessy would like to stress that the consumption of our brand or any other alcohol beverage does not protect against the virus. Uh, somehow, I don't think this is the last we'll hear of Mr. Sonko. Speaking of ill-informed advice amid the coronavirus, can you microwave your money clean? Let's find out. The internet is currently riddled with ill-informed homemade kits and methods to oust the coronavirus from our lives. But what about money? Has anyone soaked their cash in vodka or, uh, I don't know, microwaved it? Actually, yes. One man from Busan in South Korea demonstrated that microwaves will not only nuke your money clean from anything ever, but they will also make you look like an idiot. The man gathered up a cool total of 39 10,001 notes, which is about $328, packed them all into his microwave, turned up the dial and nuked the hell out of them. Unsurprisingly, they burnt. He took his tortured cash into the bank and cried for help. In the end, 33 notes were salvageable, meaning he only lost $50 to those dreaded microwaves. Ah, but this isn't the first time, though, that someone has had this genius idea. A Chinese woman in Jiangsu province tried the very same, only this time up to the risk and put $449 in the microwave. Suffice to say, her money was so clean, you had to wear gloves to touch it. This goes without saying, I'm sure, but the only thing that should be spinning around in your microwave 
is a meal for one. Because let's face it, we're all alone during these quarantined times. You know what else is ailing East Africa? A locust plague of biblical proportions. Swaths of locusts usually come in waves in East African countries throughout the year, a cycle that, although challenging, farmers have learned to handle. But what happens when you get hit by both a massive plague of crop-devouring desert locusts and a world pandemic? According to a report by the Globe and Mail, East African countries could be facing a food crisis as waves of locusts have hit crops in the region since the end of 2019. A third wave of the insects is expected to hatch and spread in June and July. Just one locust can travel 150 kilometers in 24 hours and is capable of eating its own weight in crops each day. A small swarm of locusts, which could be around 40 to 80 million, can cover about a square kilometer and eat the same amount of food consumed by 35,000 humans in a day. On top of crops being impacted by the waves of locust plagues, Stephanie Hansen, a senior vice president of One Acre Fund, told the Center for Strategic and International Studies that farmers' incomes have also been affected due to restrictions put in place during the pandemic, which limit their capacity to sell food in local markets. The pandemic has also made it difficult for farmers to get rid of the locusts. Hansen noted that pilots in Kenya who fly pesticide aircraft are required to land at local airports before the national curfew is lifted. According to an assessment conducted by the Ethiopian government in collaboration with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations and NGOs working in the region, the spread of desert locusts has left around 1 million Ethiopian people in need of emergency food relief. What actions must be taken to help these people survive two crises at the same time? Well, among many other suggestions, the assessment states that people must be provided chemicals to deal with the locusts and other pests ravaging their crops and, of course, farmers need to be provided food supply for their livestock and agricultural input must be distributed. Slowly but surely, we are seeing all the side effects of this pandemic. Keep watching to find out what else is being affected by the spread of COVID-19. Times like these have made us realize the importance of frontline workers. All the people forced to work during a pandemic are dealing with negligent customers, stocking shelves in our supermarkets, driving our buses, providing health services, the list goes on. However, not all frontline workers are visible. This is the case of meat packaging workers, many of whom have been affected by the spread of coronavirus in their workplace. Due to the spread, several plants in the country have had to shut down, affecting meat production. This is what you need to know. A report by the Associated Press explains that efforts from the meat industry in the United States to curtail the spread of the virus among their employees have resulted in slower meat production, which will eventually result in less meat in the market and higher prices for the meat that is available. Pork production has been the most affected. According to the report, 15 of America's largest pork packaging plants are responsible for 60% of all processed pork produced in the U.S. This means that when one shuts down, overall pork production is severely affected. As of last week, pork processing capacity has dropped 25%. The Associated Press reports the U.S. Department of Agriculture expects beef to rise in price by between 1 to 2 percent, poultry by 1.5 percent, and pork between 2 and 3 percent. So, will we be seeing a food shortage emergency anytime soon? Well, it doesn't seem so. Jason Lusk, professor and department head in the Department of Agricultural Economics at Purdue University, told the AP, by and large, there's been enough food. You might not get your exact variety that you want or the exact type you want, but there's been food available if you have the money to buy it. But what happens if meat production plants continue to shut down? Who will be able to afford meat then? The Chinese Wuhan coronavirus has gotten so bad around the world that even Nara deer are being affected. According to Sora News 24, videos popping up on social media are showing herds of deer roaming the streets in search of food. Usually, the famous deer of Nara are kept properly fed by the hordes of tourists. Unfortunately, the Wuhan virus has killed all of that. The dramatic drop in people visiting Nara have caused the deer to leave the park in search of food. Several TV news reports have shown deer sightings at unfamiliar spots around the city. 
Residents report that deer have been devouring shrubs and flowers on the sidewalks. Hopefully things will get back to normal soon, and if you happen to be in the neighbourhood, be a deer and toss a few rice crackers their way. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.